Now, the ushers at the door, you know, what is the procedure? Because, like, sometimes people might come in with their shoes on. <laughs> and I'll run very aggressively. So, whoa, 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 whoa. You see? And was, so, no, we. <laughs> okay. So, you, it was it, it's just always good to, just, again, when you approach the boss, just ask, what, what is the procedure? You know, should I cover my head or should I take my shoes off? You know, um, basically. But, uh, you know, again, they're, they're not places to be here. They're places where we remember God, we pray, and we worship the Lord. We organize charitable events and educational events, you know, and try to help the people, you know. So you should not fear. Are women well? Let, yeah, let, let, let me add something. Yeah, go ahead. I, I think it's critical for In other words, there's this mystery about the masjid. What, what's, what do they do there? And, and the best way to do that is open up the doors and let them in. I remember 1987, you know, uh, we closed down 15 drug houses on this block. It was on the front page of the uh, New York Times. And, and I remember, I'll never forget this, a, a, an African-American Jehovah Witness, old lady, she came in and she sat down and she said, you know what, I've never been here before. And you know what, and she sat and spoke to me for like two hours. And I said, well, I gotta go. So the point is, is that when we open the doors, if you look at the 79th precinct, which is the precinct in this area, the, 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 the captain and many of the, of the patrols have been in here. We've had meetings with the police in here, in this masjid. We had meetings with politicians in this masjid. And I think the thing is, the key is, all over the nation, when we demystify the masjid by letting them come in, inviting them. I always believe that when people know better, they do better. And so that's what's going on, and that's how you make the people say, you know what? I've been in the ministry before. These, these, these they're, they're really human beings in there. Well, what about women? Are women welcome? Oh, absolutely. Are you, are you serious? Definitely, women are welcome. Everyone is welcome. At the same time, when you're doing your services. Same right? exact time. Yeah. Yes. I never see women in them when they you, in my home. It's when we men. worship, oftentimes, in most of the ministries, when we worship, the men is in one area and the women on another area. But then in some masjids, you have the men in front and the women in the back, but they're there and they worship together. That's, that's basic in our religion. In fact, uh, if you go to the masjid in Mecca, you see the men and the women all there together. And that's the masjid in Mecca. Number one. one the, yeah, also, just, you know, contextually, we live in New York City. There are people visiting mosques every day in New York City. Uh, this mosque, I mean, all of us, it's, it's uh, and, and I'm, I'm really beginning to wonder if there's also a generational thing here, and what I mean by that is that, uh, for instance, at the Mosque of Islamic Brotherhood, where I'm the imam, we're over in the village of Harlem, several times a year, we have groups of Christian and Jewish visitors from school-age children up to graduate students who come to the mosque male and female. We have a relationship with Union Theological Seminary, Interfaith Center of New York. People are constantly coming. And one of the groups that I have that come every year and have been visiting the mosque, this will be their 14th year, is the uh, Covenant of the Sacred Heart School. And these are all sixth graders. And invariably, when I ask these sixth grade girls, how many of you have been in a mosque before? Several hands go up, and when I ask them, well, what mosque have you been in? They've been in mosques in Turkey, <laughs> you know, all over the world, and in America, and, and visiting mosques, and I'll say this, and, and, you know, this is not a phenomenon in the African-American community, and I need to say that also, you know, the, this strangeness that's kind of an undercurrent here, doesn't exist in the African-American community, where the Muslims, there are about two million African-American Muslims, our families are Christians. And they constantly come to the mosque for weddings, funerals, and other types of events. So it's just very important for us to get a, 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 a larger picture here of what's going on in America, and maybe in Utah or somewhere, <laughs> it might be a different situation, but certainly not in the big cities. Non-Muslim vi visitors to mosques is a uh, frequent occurrence 
in the large cities of America. How successful have these open dialogues been? Are you getting a lot of visitors or people inquiring, asking questions? Well, again, how long have you been doing this? Well, we've been doing it for, since we've been opening up our mass gigs. As, again, uh, as I was listening to Imam uh, Talib uh, uh, make his comments, uh, uh, every Juma, which is our Friday prayer, we invite non-Muslims to come to participate in our services. And so I know, and I'll, I'm sure Imam uh, Saraj does it here, and, yes. and Imam. We do this in our communities, and uh, this is why we have such good relationships. And this is not new, this dialogue thing. We encourage our congregation, bring uh, your co-workers and, your, and the people that you're going to school with, bring them on Friday, so they can, and we have chairs in the back, like you have chairs there, and they listen to the sermons, you see. So we encourage this. And I would just re re would suggest, you know, like, if, 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 you know, just to allay any fears that you have, you know, call the mosque first, you know, or uh, uh, find out, you know, uh, or if you know a Muslim or someone that knows a Muslim, <laughs> they can take you to the mosque, all right? But uh, it's okay, though. You can, almost any, any mosque, I can't think of no mosque where those would be closed, but especially, as the Imam mentioned, inside the cities, you know, so again, the, the mosques are open. And uh, how successful we will be, again, we've always had great success in doing this, and hopefully this week, by, by being more, you know, get, we're extending it, extending it more and, and trying to get a little bit more aggressive. Just to, just to get Muslims to do it more, you know, again, that's what the problem is. We're not doing it enough, you know what I'm saying? And so if enough of us begin to do it more, you know, again, it will again go a long way in terms of educating the, the, the public and again, allaying their fears about Muslims in the mosque, what goes on in the mosque, okay? So this is the idea. So we, yeah. We yeah. have an obligation yeah. to, to do that. You yeah. know, another sociological aspect okay. is when you have, you know, two thirds of the Muslim population in America is uh, is immigrant in origin, and the nature of being an immigrant is that when you first come to a country, mm -hmm. you tend to be kind of insular. Mm -hmm. And so we, and, and this is what we're doing. You know, those of us who are not immigrants, we're encouraging. Courage our brothers and sisters to open the doors of the masjid and don't feel like they just have to practice their religion mm -hmm. behind closed doors. In some cases, people are migrating from countries that are not as open as this country is. So this is all part of a learning process where, wherein we all learn to be good neighbors together. So have you been doing it for decades or say the last Ten years or five years, as this is just the philosophy of a month. Right? We've been doing it for decades. decades. We've been Muslim. You know, that the mom mentioned, you know, many of our family. You know, uh, my mother, as a result of coming in, you know, uh, at my invitation, she became a Muslim because my she died. You see what I'm saying? You see. So again, we've always uh, uh, been open since we've been Muslim. Again, this is. Uh, you know, we're part of the land, we're, part of, we're sons of the soil, if you will. You know, there, there's, no, there, there's no change, you know. And so, again, it was easy for, just like oftentimes people would ask, you know, like, uh, what kind of problems have you had since 9-11 in terms of your neighbor? None whatsoever. None whatsoever. Our neighbors are the same. They know us already. They know who we are. Because, again, we don't live in a vacuum. You know, we, we're, we're from this country. We are citizens. So we know how to interact with our Christian uh, relatives, neighbors co-workers without any problem whatsoever. So the mosques have always been open ever since we became Muslim ourselves many decades ago. That's not changed. Now we're trying to, again, expand it more and get other people to become more open with their masjid so that we can educate people, so that we can allay their fears of the mosques and Muslims. Uh, the, the question I would like to ask is, uh, is there's a major focus from the non-Muslim community uh, about women, the role of women in Islam. And the misconception is that women are subjugated, subject, oppressed, and so forth. Could, how could you relax those fears in respect to Islam, in respect to the role of women in Islam? Let them come into the mosque and speak to the Muslim women. No, that's all. Yeah, it's always better the women do that. All right? A lot of times we do it. You know, then it's almost like, well, like, wow, you know, that's a man's perspective. But what I'm saying, what, yeah. what is the Islamic, and in other words, what what's does Islam teach about the role of women let in Islam? Let them come in, let them come in, let them come in and talk to the women in Islam. And you held uh, a couple of uh, meetings yesterday. Mm -hmm. how, how did those go? Who came? Yeah, I, I can comment on that. Yeah. Yeah. There were actually three of them. There, there were actually three events yesterday. Uh, one at the Islamic Cultural Center uh, in Manhattan at 96th Street and uh, 3rd Avenue, 
which was, um, I'm sorry, Imam Shamsi Ali was in here, but the report that we got was that it, it went very well. Again, that's a mosque that is uh, beginning to build a reputation for having these doors open uh, constantly. There was an open house here, which Imam can comment on. Same thing, went very well. And then also in Manhattan, very interesting, at the Church of St. Paul's and St. Andrew's, there was a few of us were there, very well attended uh, gathering of uh, uh, Christians, Muslims, and Jews, very well attended. And that particular church has almost a 20 year history of hosting those type of uh, interfaith events. So uh, we take these three events and we think we're off to a good start. One quick yeah. I'm going to actually bring one of my assistants here. Brother Abdul Khadi will come up. Let me tell you why I was out of, out, out of time. I had just gotten back. And we had here a Saturday called Day of Dignity. And from what I understand, about 800 people. So Brother Abdul Khadi, he give us a little bit of background. Can you spell your name, please? Uh, Abdul, capital A B D U L, Cordia, capital Q A D I R. Yeah, uh, Mahabha Bikram. Welcome to y'all. Uh, yeah, Saturday we had uh, a Day of Dignity, which is an annual event. It's uh, assistance to the poor and needy. And we did service 800 people here. Uh, last year we did 500. This year the target was 800, and the target was reached. And it's uh, sponsored by Islamic Relief and many co-sponsors, Church of Latter-day Saints and other organizations, you know, uh, Christian and Jewish as well. Also, um, in, in terms of the open house, uh, we had been doing open houses specifically in, in this kind of context uh, prior to starting over again. And this would be uh, our seventh year of doing open houses at this time. We've been doing them every year. Now it's gotten to the point that they're so successful that we have uh, determined that we're going to do them every three months. So this is the second one that we've done this year. We did one June the 27th. This one's coming up October the 24th. And in our last one, we had, <clears throat> excuse me, we had uh, over 300 people here, and we had 12 people who took, who became Muslims out of that gathering. And so um, the, the, we, we have people, actually we have people come in uh, here every week to become Muslims. The Imam just gave somebody their shahada the other day. Uh, I think it was Friday or Saturday. Saturday. It was Saturday. And uh, so it's, it's, it's not really related to 911 as media always asks this question. It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the people here. He is the one who determines who's going to be a Muslim and not any other inc incident whatsoever. So the people are coming now. They're coming. Our doors are open. Every Friday when we open our doors, we get 1,500 people or more in here. In fact, we don't even have room to put them. We have people that pray outside all year round, rain, snow, whatever, you know, so sorry. But this, this is the way it is. This masjid is a blessed masjid. We have 26 Muslim businesses in this block right here alone. Next block we have about the same. We have, going down the Ocean Avenue, we have about 50 Muslim businesses between these two blocks. So we are working, we are industrious, the people love what we're doing, we get great support, and we welcome everybody, our doors are always open, we have people coming every day, uh, brothers come and they bring food, they bring bread, they bring milk, they bring sugar, people come by, everybody's welcome to get it. This is not a strange place, this is a beautiful place, it's a welcome place, and the people come, they appreciate our services, and they're welcome to come. Different ethnic groups. I think she was very, very ethnic. She went as you. And they're not coming here because of the quote unquote radical Islamic teaching. They're coming here because it's a place of, of warmth and a place of, 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 of reverence. And we strive to make all the mosques. So when we saw you last, it was a little bit after 9 11 and that anti Islamic fervor sort of reached fever pitch then. How could you characterize the feeling now out there? Basically, we don't, uh, we didn't have that kind of backlash, uh, anti-Islam and Muslim and Islamophobia right uh, after 9-11, but now for the last uh, couple of months, particularly the last six months, this uh, Islamophobia is on rise basically, and you know the reasons. 
Uh, there, is there, it still? Is it? it still is going on nationwide. There are at least 